What's up guys, welcome back to another GGF video review and today I'll be taking a look at the brand new Fantex MV7. Now we all saw this at CES and I think a lot of people did fall in love with it. And yes, it does have that similar design we've seen before with the side and the front uh, glass windows. Now they have removed that uh, structural piece in the middle. I'll talk about that a little bit later on. But we do have some interesting features. We've got some awesome cable management around the rear. It's got that door that closes and then it's got that angular front and back. Now you might be wondering why the NV7? Now I reached out to Fantex about the naming on this and they got the NV for sort of being envious, envy of this case. And then the seven is just, it doesn't really mean anything. It's just a reference point on the sizing chart for this case. So being seven, I would say this is a medium to large uh, size and there could be a nine or there could be a five in the future. So we'll wait and see. But anyway, let's jump in and check out the case. It's not often I unbox a case stand back and go wow this is nice and that's exactly what happened with the nv7 and yes it does have similarities to cases we've seen before but this is by far a copy and paste saga there is so much going on here and you can clearly see this chassis has been built from the ground up we've got a complete closed back with hidden cable routing built-in motherboard accent lighting that can adjust to your motherboard size an angular bottom radiator tray that can be rotated to become flat and enough headroom to fit the largest radiators in push-pull. The NV7 comes in white and black, and we have them both. I'll be covering this review in the white model, as it's just easier to film. But I'll be doing a build in both. But to be honest, I like the black model just as much as I like the white. And with the new Fantex D30 RGB fans coming out, they're going to make a great combo. I saw this case at CES earlier this year, but actually having this in front of me in my studio really shows its size. It's big, but I wouldn't say it's unnecessarily big. Dimensions come at 590 high, 260 wide, and 531 deep. As you can see, it's still a baby against the Fantex Elite. I'm really liking the outside aesthetics with angles and lines we haven't really seen before. The MV7 stands flat on two feet, but is then angled roughly 10 degrees, which gives us this very unique look. I guess some will like it, while some won't. Apart from looks, this also helps with airflow. As we take a look at the back, there's a whopping 60 millimeters of clearance here due to that angle. Case materials are mainly made up of steel for the internal structure, back, top, and rear side panels. Some plastic can be found around the feet. Now the feet are steel, but just wrapped in plastic. While some other plastic can be found around the IO module and the built-in motherboard RGB cover strips. Side panels are four millimeters thick and on the white, they are 100% clear. You will notice though, there is a fine green edge on the open end of the glass. I did pick this up at CES and mention this to Fantex. I guess this probably cannot be avoided unless some special kind of glass is used. Although on the black NV7, we don't see this as the glass on this model is tinted with what I would say is about a medium to light darkness. Removing side panels wasn't an issue, but finding out how to do that had me baffled. Fantex has done such a good job that not one screw is visible from the outside of the case. And yet all the side panels are locked down via screws apart from the rear. Getting inside the chassis is all done by the rear. This is where your journey starts with the NV7. A simple pull at the bottom right corner of this mesh door gives you access to both the main side and top panels, which are held in place via captive thumb screws. The rear door is kept closed via strong magnets, and I had no issues here. It can also be removed altogether if you wish. As I said before, the main side panel is held in by two captive thumb screws and is pulled back to unlock. It might just be my sample, but boy, this was a bit of work sliding this panel on and off. The main issue was getting the right grip, but once I got the hang of it, it was fine. The black model didn't seem to have this issue. The front glass panel is locked in via two screws and slides off. In terms of case rigidity and having no support bar, I found no issues with the case flexing. Foam padding can be found inside both of the glass side panels. The top panel also pushes off, and once this panel was off, this gave us access to the one screw which secures the rear side panel in place. Once this screw is removed, the rear side panel pushes up. The rear of the NV7 is special, and I could probably do a separate video just covering what's going on here. I can really see the thought and attention to detail Fandex have done just in this area. The whole concept behind the NV7 is to create a case that not only looks good from the usual front and side, but to make a case look good from all sides. This is done via cable routing channels they keep everything organized and in place. Then rear cables are either fed out the bottom via this cable grommet hole or via these channels that guide your cables under the rear door. If this isn't your thing, although I think it's worth at least trying out first, the larger cable management bracket can be removed 
and like I said before, that rear door can be removed as well, essentially turning the back of the NV7 into a more traditional case. With the rear door closed, I had 70mm from the inside back to the motherboard's rear I.O and rear GPU ports. Unless you have some insanely long USB sticks, I can't see any issues here with closing the rear door. Front I.O is located at the front of the chassis, which includes two USB Type-A 3.0 ports, one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port, and an audio and mic combo port. Another bonus is this I.O module is removable and can go in the exact same spot around the back. Remove two screws, pop it out, and install it back in the rear. Pantex even include a plastic cover that goes over the rear I.O spot while it's not being used. Nice. Power button is found along the front top of the NV7 with no reset button. RGB controls are also found up here, and we now find Fantex have included two RGB channels, an A and a B channel. This links up to the RGB hub inside, where each channel has two ports that can be used. Just to note, the built-in motherboard RGB already takes up one port in B1. Controls for these include a switch to change between modes, speed control, color, and mode. A cable is also supplied to control all this via a motherboard RGB header. I just found one issue with all this. I love this whole concept, but the built-in RGB controller does not use traditional 3-pin RGB headers. Instead, it uses Fantech's own RGB ecosystem where it will only work with their products. I reached out to them about this to see if any adapter cables will be available as none were supplied in the box. I'll update you on this in the outro of this video, or I'll see if I can find something off Amazon or AliExpress. Main ventilation for the NV7 is via the bottom with a removable dust filter which is probably the finest mesh I've ever seen. The rear side panel has cutouts for your PSU fan while the fixed rear side panel that isn't removable has cutouts for the 360 side mount. Moving inside we find an enormous amount of room and with the front glass panel removed as well it feels like I'm building in an open air case. The motherboard area is sunk in and this is where you'll find the two RGB panels, one above and one to the right of the motherboard. These are the ones controlled via the RGB controls on the top of the case. The idea behind these are nice, but the implementation is even better. Fantex could have done this many ways, but the way they did it just works. For starters, both these covers can be removed. The top simply pushes to the right. It's a bit tight and needs a bit of force, but it does come off. The side RGB cover is locked in via a thumb screw at the back at the bottom. Once that's removed, this cover pushes down. Just one thing to note, the top cover needs to be removed first. And look at that, no cables at all, as Fantex have used spring contacts for these. With the RGB covers removed, we now have a better look around the motherboard tray. Cable routing holes can be found all around. Three large holes at the bottom, but these bottom holes have been done in a way that once the motherboard is installed, they don't look like holes, rather large grooves. Very neat. Two holes can be found at the top for EPS and fans, while two more on the right side with some pretty stiff right angle rubber grommets. I just love this look with the motherboard installed and the RGB covers back in. All cable holes are basically hidden. Motherboard support is of course up to EATX and I had no issues with 24 pin routing as the cable grommet is far enough over to not be an issue with EATX boards. SSI CEB motherboards are supported but cable routing may be tight. Another neat trick is the right side RGB cover can adjust depending on your motherboard form factor. The cover can simply be flipped, allowing it to be closer to your motherboard for ATX, then flipped around to allow for wider EATX motherboards. If this isn't your cup of tea, you can just remove the RGB altogether, like I mentioned before. GPU support, you'll have no issues here, with the max GPU width of 190mm, and for length being pretty much unlimited. I would like to note there's 300mm of GPU length up to the side radiator bracket, Anything longer will protrude into the side radiator space. As you can see, this Strix 4080 is 360mm long and does go into this space. The side radiator location is recessed 50mm, allowing for radiators or fans to be installed behind long GPUs. If water cooling your GPU, you'll have no issues interfering with the side radiator location as once blocked, 40 series cards become much shorter. Before we cover all the water cooling support in the NV7, Let's take a look around the back, and there's a lot going on here. PSU location is now found via the top. Max PSU length, I'd say, is around 240mm before things start to get tight. There's also a foam pad, 
for your PSU to comfortably sit on. Moving down, we find two door panels. The top door reveals support for two 2.5 inch SSDs and these two interesting prongs sticking out. These are to help loom excess cables by wrapping them around. I'll loop back to this at the end of the video after completing my build to see if I use these or not. The bottom door reveals more storage options. Here by default, there's room for four 2.5 inch SSDs to the left on the door and a spot for one 3.5 inch hard drive. The manual states that four 2.5 inch SSDs and one 3.5 inch hard drive should fit all together, but I cannot see how, as the SSD and hard drive screw holes overlap. I've reached out to Fanex about this and will follow up this in the outro. The bottom door also supports two 3.5 inch hard drives if not using any 2.5 inch SSDs. Both of these drive doors can be completely removed as well. Cable management seems good with plenty of Velcro ties and channels to route cables. I'll cover how this went in the video outro. The MV7 has four main radio locations, top, bottom, side and rear. Starting at the bottom, there's a removable bracket which is locked in via a thumb screw at the rear. By default, this bracket is angled which follows the same flow as the case. Flip it around and now this radiator bracket becomes flat. I'm so glad Fantex did this and does a really nice touch. The bottom radiator bracket supports three 120 or three 140 millimeter fans or up to a 360 millimeter radiator max. No 420 support is found here as there just isn't enough length within the case. Fanex have offered three rows for mounting slits in this bracket, which means if going with a 360 radiator, we have three mounting positions pushing it further or closer to the side panel. Bottom clearance says 125 millimeters here to the GPU in the first PCIe slot for radiator and fans. Here we have an EK X360M with Fantex 30mm thick D30 fans. Moving to the top radiator location, and what can I say? There's more room than I've ever seen before. Support here is for only 120mm fans and radiators. Due to the PSU being at the top, this area isn't as wide as the bottom. Max support here is up to 360mm, but clearance here, well, I'm going to say is unlimited. This will only come into play when using a side radiator. Here we have an EK X360M with push-pull 30mm thick D30 Fantex fans. That's 120mm of thickness right there. Just to note, if there are any radiators wider than the new EK Surface Rads, they might not fit up here. Installing this X360M up the top had no real play left or right. The side radiator location supports 120mm sizing again and up to a 360mm radiator max. It looks like a 480 would fit, but I measured the bracket and it was about 20mm too short. This bracket is removable and locked in via a thumb screw at the top. Just to note there is no access to the rear side radiator location from the back. This rear part of the side is fixed in via rivets. So everything is installed on the bracket outside the case, then popped back into place. As this side location is quite long, longer than a standard 360 radiator, Fandex includes some magnetic plastic side covers to help optimize airflow instead of having large gaps. Clearance here with no top or bottom radiator is going to be unlimited once again. Now with an EK X360M installed in both the top and the bottom, this causes them to hang down into the side radiator area. Side clearance to the edge of the top and bottom radiator is 95 millimeters. This is still enough room to have another EK X360M with 30 millimeter thick Fantex fans installed in the side with the top and bottom still populated. Pretty insane. One thing to note that once this side rad bracket is installed, there is no room behind it for side distro pumps. Side distros being installed onto this bracket will either need front facing pumps or for EK FLTs, the supplied brackets will need to be used. The last radiator location is the rear 240 spot. I love how there's a little vented cover for this. Install your fans or radiator, then put the cover back over to clean up any screws. Or this door can be removed completely, allowing room for fans to be installed in the rear. There's 35 millimeters of clearance from this radiator spot to the back door of the chassis. For EK FLTs, this will support DDC FLTs only to hang over into the rear, not D5 FLTs. Clearance on the side bracket into the case is 35mm to the start of your motherboard's I.O. cover. My test board's I.O. cover was perfectly in line with the case frame, so radiator clearance here can be more than the 35mm. It just depends how much of your motherboard you want to cover. Plenty of cable routing has been allocated for all the radiator and fan locations. The top has two cutouts along the very top, the side has three cutouts, the rear has two small cutouts for fan cables, while the bottom has probably the world's smallest cable grommet I've ever seen, or you could just use the other three holes that run along the bottom of the motherboard tray. 
Fantex also provide fill and drain port holes. These both use standard pass-through sizes. The fill port can be found at the very top, and yes, the top panel does slide over with a stop fitting installed, while the drain port location at the bottom rear. An anti-sag bracket is included with the NV7, which screws onto the RGB side cover. This bracket is simple to use, and it more caresses your GPU than just hold it. This bracket is made from steel, and once installed, my GPU was perfectly straight with no sagging at all. Alrighty guys, now that's most of the ins and outs on the NV7. I know you guys have been waiting, so let's jump in and check out the build. So that's the final build there. It was very, very rushed. Uh, I did have a big order coming from Alpha Cool. Uh, it has been delayed and stuck in customs. So I wanna give a huge shout out to uh, Performance PCs. They came to the rescue and shipped the required Alpha Cool I just needed for this build, which was the uh, two UT6360 uh, radiators and then their new core distro plate that's on the right. And we'll talk a little bit more about the final build after I cover some other things. Now I did mention uh, during that review, I would cover some things in the outro. The RGB cables to uh, run other items on that RGB hub that's sort of on the back on the side, I couldn't find any. I reached out to Fantex and they're gonna see what they can do about those cables. Uh, for me, for this build, um, obviously because I use the Fantex fans, they have that connector. I plugged them straight into that hub and then I ran that hub into an RGB splitter, which was just the cable with the four that uh, split out of it. And then I ran that into the motherboard uh, header. So then the RGB hub went into one of those ports and then I had three left over for things like the uh, CPU block, the distro and so on. That is a way to get around it, but having just a standard RGB hub or some extra ports would be really cool. Now the storage issue, I did reach out to them. They actually did punch the holes in correct, so you can actually fit the SSDs and the hard drive together. It's just that the samples that went out, the uh, holes were stamped too close together or they were next to each other, so you couldn't have them both. And the rear cabling, I was actually really impressed. It doesn't look like there's a lot of room in the rear, but actually, uh, first off, I didn't really use those cable prongs, those two sticking out. Ideally, it would be really nice if they were just threaded holes and you could actually remove them because I found when I closed that top door, I did have a cable mod 24 pin and some other cables. And when that's kind of sitting flat in there, once you push the prongs in, the prongs aren't, they're not pointy. I can understand why they didn't make them pointy. They're kind of flat like a nail that have a slightly bigger head. So once they do close, uh, do close in, they don't really want to go in between cables. So they were kind of fouling and I did have to make sure I was moving the cables around when those prongs went in. So if they were removable, that was really good. But there was a heap of room in the back. I actually managed to use both of those doors. Now it would be a different story if you had a lot of mechanical hard drives in there, you will be limited. But even down the bottom here behind this radiator where it slants up, there's actually room in the back chamber that under there so you can actually lay a lot of cables down below there and I was really impressed it's actually quite amazing I did not use one zip tie in this whole case at the back and I was really impressed with that um, some cases I've used recently have been a complete nightmare to work in the back I've had cases that have a bottom chamber and then also the area in the rear and I still had more room in this case to work with and in the end it just looks really neat uh, especially having the piece at the top, you can put some cables up there, then you can, put, you can put the cables behind the two doors, and then all the cables underneath, sort of down below where that angle slopes up. Um, 
Some other things with this case. Now, one issue I didn't know, uh, note earlier with an EHX motherboard, I think they said you can do 270 millimeters long. This is the uh, Z69 Extreme Glacial. It is very big. I did find out the USB 3.0 connector actually sticks out a bit further than the 24 pin. So with that side RGB cover on, there was no way to get that uh, USB 3.0 connector uh, in there with that RGB strip in. The only other way you can do it is just remove that side cover. But as you can see, the side covers, the top and the side of that RGB just really finish off this build. Now, one other issue you might find with this rear door, if you do have your case against a wall where the back is pushing against the wall and you, you face a wall on your desk, obviously the door isn't going to open up. So if you do need to say, take the side panel off, you need to open the door. Take the top off, you need to open the door. You wanna plug a network cable in, you need to open the door quite a bit. So that will hinder having to do that. But in saying that, the door probably wouldn't really need to be used and you can still use all the cable routing and so on. If it's against the wall, you're obviously just gonna take the door off because you're not gonna see it. Door is really if your case is more out in the open and you have a good 360 degree view of, of your case because that's when you really want the door. Now, another area is, you might be wondering, I didn't cover the bottom radiator, if it's on an angle or if it's sitting flat, do you get any more clearance uh, with it on an angle or being flat? You don't really, it might be a few millimeters, but it actually rocks at uh, one point at the back. So whether it tilts down and tilts flat, you still got that uh, one static point at the back. So you don't really gain any height uh, to put a radiator. And then another thing I really like with this case with uh, previous cases that follow this uh, similar design, uh, they've done in the past is they're hard to pick up whereas this one it actually has little i wouldn't say the handles but it's got where that uh, angular design is at the front and the back you can grab it in there and you can actually grab it uh sort of on the side here and at the back as well as that has that 60 millimeters of clearance at the back to pick up so really easy to pick up now the last thing you're probably wanting to know is the price now i was really surprised when i saw this price and there's been a lot of expensive cases that cases that have come out recently. Uh, the NV7 retails for 220 US dollars. Now I'm not sure if that is for the white model as well. That's definitely going to be the black. Normally white models are say five or ten dollars more but even then this is a tremendous value. I think it might be a little bit big for some people but um, as I stated earlier with the uh, being the NV7 you might see a smaller size and for you guys out there that want a bigger case there might be a larger option. Now I do want to cover some other things I did use, I used the new D30 uh, fans. These are actually really good performing fans. Now they're not gonna be as good as their uh, T30s, but they're not too far off. They don't have the switchable speed, so obviously they don't go as high as I think the T30s do uh, 3000 RPM. These do on here up to uh, 2000 RPM, which isn't too bad. And then the three millimeters H2O of the uh, static pressure, which is pretty good, especially for an RGB fan. And as you can see, connecting all of these, they do have the, uh, covers that go over all the screw holes and they do have the covers. One side is where all the contacts are. So this is actually how you connect, bridge the fans together. They don't bridge on um, end to end, they bridge side to side. And then you put all these covers around to, ho to hide everything, which keeps it uh, nice and neat. And then these will retail for 30 US dollars. Now, you might be running three fans for 30 US dollars. That's pretty cheap. That's because there's no controller included with these. There's no uh, a USB connecting to your system. There's none of that. These will require an RGB controller, but then these do use the Fantex uh, RGB ecosystem, which is that uh, special three pin connector. But then in the box, you do get an adapter cable that converts it to the Fantex connector to your standard RGB uh, three pin connector. So that is handy. Now these fans also do come in a regular flow and reversed flow. So just be careful when you do pick these up, obviously reverse flow is gonna be for say your intake and then your regular is your standard one you normally use for your exhaust. So just keep in mind when picking up those. Now let's take a little look at this build. As you can see, I went with something simple, just a thick rad at the top, thick rad at the bottom. They're both 60 millimeters. I did want to use a, they haven't used a thick rad until you have used a uh, Alpha Cool Monster. This is 80 millimeters. I really did want to use this at the top because you have so much headroom this was gonna go up here, but this arrived late. It probably would have looked a little bit silly up the top being so thick, but once again, it's only 20 millimeters, so you might not have really noticed it. But yeah, once again, I do want to shout out to uh, Performance PCs for uh, rushing their gear over. They actually overnighted that uh, to get this build done. And then I have used the new Alpha Cool uh, Core Distro. Now, what's interesting 
with those distros is they have a 240 and a 360, but they have two of each. So they have a left and a right. Obviously this is the left. So all the in and the out ports are on the left side. So if you then have an inverted case where you, your distro goes on the other side, which would be this side, you would go with the right one and then all your ports go on the right. Just so you're not going over, you could have them on the other side. It just means you gotta go over the pump uh, onto the other side which is pretty sick. And then of course, being this case, because it does have, doesn't have the back chamber for the side reservoir or radiator, I wanted something with a front mounted pump. And that's what this Alpha Cool uh, unit does. It doesn't have the pump behind it, so you don't need to raise it off the back. It can sit flush and then the pump just uh, sits out in front. And then I added, I added some mirror acrylic behind that side distro, just to give it that nice little effect so you can't see the white through it. And then. I said before we have the Asus ROG uh, Z690 Glacial. We have a 3900KS. I do have a time that's video coming out on all of this. We have the Fantex GPU block, which is really nice. That's a 4090 uh, ROG Strix there. And then we have, once again, that XPG ROG certified memory, which I've used in quite a few builds. It looks really nice. But um, I think I've covered most of it in this video. Um, it's probably going for a little bit too long, but really impressed with this case. Uh, the whole cable routing idea around the back is, is really nice. I, I even ended up using a drain port. The only issue I will say here that I've used the standard Bits Power uh, drain port, if Obviously it's not gonna stick out this way, but even when I had a 90, I couldn't close this door. Obviously they're not gonna redesign or make the case much thicker to fit uh, or drain ports. You might have to go with, um, I had to go with the skinny 90, but you might have to play around with those uh, smaller pushing uh, drain ports, but I probably ended up going with $100 worth of fittings just to route the, uh, just to route the, uh, the fittings a little bit more around to the side a bit, and then I can close this door comfortably because I really wanted to see how I could incorporate the drain port into uh, this build. But yeah, really impressed with the cable management at the back as well. As you can see in, the, in this photo, I haven't used one zip tie and everything looks nice and neat. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanna thank, thank Fantix for sending this out to check out and we'll see you next time.